Well, guys, it is uh, August 13th, morning update. All right, well, starting to, not starting to, last night we got the, I gave you guys kind of the, the indication that I was not, even even before this pump here, I was like, nah, I felt like a trap. <laughs> sure enough, sure enough, look what they did though. Just, it's worthy of taking a peek at what they created on the chart. They had a move here that stopped and reacted at the 1618. But but here's here's why you should not have taken the trade short from this range. Um, I talked about it uh, with the elite group last night in a live. I mentioned I said what I'm looking for here since the C wave right here. And this is really really important. If this is an ABC flat and we're looking for it to continue down, right? If that's what that is. And certainly it was looking that way, right? Then that C wave has to be five waves. The C wave needs to be five waves. Now what we had, if you'll notice, is we, we had hidden bear, man. We had strong hidden bearish divergence. So we had reasons to think, hey, this might be a good short, right? So they printed hidden bear. They even gave us a little rejection here at the 1618. Here's, here's the problem. You need to be able to count the five subwaves of C. Okay? And in counting those subwaves, you need divergence between the third and the fifth wave. And you never got that. You never got a fifth wave, number one. A fifth wave that came and broke the high to create divergence. Where this made a lower high with a continuation down. Never got that. And so when you, uh, and this is something I don't know that I have mentioned before or taught before. But I want to mention it now. Because it'll, it'll, keep you, it'll keep you out of trouble, keep you out of this trade. That we're looking for five waves in C. You don't see five waves here, do you? You don't, you don't see a finished five waves. It, it just goes straight up. But even if you can't count the subwaves, you need to be able to see divergence between the fourth and the third and the fifth wave because that, that's what happens on the chart when you have an impulse. You have divergence between the third and the fifth. And we didn't get that. So that's, uh, that's why I never entered this trade and I just kept my... I opened a um, what do you right here at this that I opened a, a hedge long, so I was short from here, and I was and I longed from here, and last night I closed my long up in this region, hoping that uh, we got a finished five wave move close to it, and we might be heading down at least for three waves. So with my hedge, it was a successful hedge. I protected all the profit. I didn't let the, the wave come all the way back and take all my profit back. So that was good. Now I didn't get this trade. I didn't I didn't win this trade like handily, right? But I protected this trade. And it's a bad expectation to think that you're going to catch every wave up and down. It's just a not a good expectation. You win them and you lose them. Or you miss them. But this wasn't a loss for me in any way, shape, or form. In fact, I'm actually I'm actually up a couple of bucks uh, here on, on my trade in Ethereum this morning. Now, I may need to go ahead and close it depending on what this, what this wave is. But this wasn't a loss. Even though I didn't make the money, I would have loved to have hit that trade and, and made that money to the upside. But that's just unreasonable to think that that's going to happen. The wave was trending down. It was powerful. It came back up in three waves and gave us really powerful hidden bearish divergence. 
did it in three ways looking for one more wave to give me confirmation never got that confirmation never got that fifth wave look and so that's why I didn't enter this trade last night um, short any questions about that that's really important to learn what I just said and that's why I started with it this morning because that's more important to learn than than what I think the market's gonna do this morning it's it's learning to be able to recognize waves for yourself and and part of that what I just shared with you just comes with experience just comes with knowing what to expect and, and what the look was and I had a, I had a feeling I had a feeling but I didn't want to ignore the signs that it was giving me because guys it could have just as easily come on down and made a lower low evidently there was more liquidity to be had up here uh, by the exchanges and by the market makers than, than down here so they brought it they brought it uh, up Okay, um, any questions about that piece of uh, the puzzle? All right, so that was last night. Let's look at today. What do we, how do we handle today? Well, what do we see here? Let's, let's just start making some observations. Um, when we pull the fibs here, we you'll notice that the... I'm trying to you'll notice that this comes to the 2618 I get divergence between this wave and this wave right there you see that So here's a fourth wave right there. And then I have divergence between this wave and this wave right there. So this is the top of three, top of five. I have a potential finished count here, five wave count. So that's a that's a potential finished finished count. So if that's finished five waves, what do we expect? Some kind of a three-way pullback. Now, depending on what size, maybe that's just the third wave that just finished. So we get a three-way pullback that that's only comes back to here. Maybe that's the fifth wave that finished. We get a larger three-way pullback but but I would expect a corrective wave in this range small or large so what do we do well what you do is you pay attention in the corrective way when you get the corrective wave you pay attention to how does the RSI react when price corrects it's, it's 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 a big deal when you have price moving in small amounts but the RSI coming down deeply so if we get just a small move up here but the RSI on the 15 minute chart comes all the way back down we're gonna say ooh that's hidden bullish divergence and that's gonna give you some confidence to maybe take a trade to the upside because the RSI will have reset and created 
when we say reset, all we just mean is that the it's just a simple language for me to say that the the bears have exhausted. They've they've come all the way down. The, the RSI has oscillated down to oversold. Okay, because that's all this is, guys. All the all the RSI is is an oscillator. Okay, up down up down up down, and every time it goes up the the bulls are taking their turn and every time it goes down the bears are taking their turn so and and the fact that it gets to be overbought or oversold is letting you know when that turn when the turn is i mean roughly speaking it's it's not it's not a perfect you know th there's nuance to reading it there's no doubt but it's it's letting you know when the Bulls and the bears are are, are are petering out. So the important thing that you need to learn, and this is critical, and I'm doing a lot of teaching this morning, but it's a big deal, is you have to learn the difference between a five-wave shape and a three-wave shape. Okay? And if this comes down and if this comes down in three waves like that, something like that, and the RSI gets all the way down here, that is a screaming, yelling um, signal to you. Go long. Think about taking a long. That's a Janet Yellen trade. <laughs> Secretary of Treasury. <laughs> okay that this is my signature trade three waves and when you measure those waves they measure like a corrective wave how does a corrective wave measure well i've got videos on how to measure them but generally very quickly you pull the fibs and the third wave will extend to the corrective pocket okay there's te that's technically the 786 to the 1618 is technically the corrective pocket. It, this wave will stop and show signs of reversal within the corrective pocket. If you see the RSI dipping down oversold plus three waves plus it measures correctively when we throw the fibs on that wave. In other words, we'll put the fibs up here. This came to the one to one. So this is look those are three reasons saying hey you can probably long this and be safe that it's going to go up as a good probability very high probability that wave is going up and guys last night until we didn't get the last wave there was a high probability this was going to go down that was the better trade but I did have some intuition and some some experience telling me something's off I'll bet you this thing goes up and certainly that's what happened and that's just part of learning and trading and experiencing the market doing crap to you <laughs> over time but nevertheless even though I felt that way I didn't trade I didn't trade what I thought might be the trap. I traded what the chart was telling me. Or I, I was looking to trade what the chart was. But I didn't get the final confirmation on this wave. With a wave up, breaking the top, and then a reversal. I didn't get that. And so because I didn't get that, I did not trade that. Again, what I, I feel like what I'm telling you. I hope it's not going over your head. It's some of the most important stuff I'll teach you. And it's really, really good and important to, to really analyze trades or things that, you know, when you were setting up, when you were looking for a particular trade and it didn't happen, look at the chart and really learn from that experience. And then you, you really gain the benefit of that. Okay, so we want to see 
what if this if this wave is going to come down and you can see that we're overbought we've got divergence we've got two diff we've got divergence there between this wave and this wave and then we have divergence between this wave the bot this wave and that wave so we've got double divergence okay triple divergence whatever you want to call it three peaks one two three all diverging just letting you know that there's a good possibility this thing is going to keep trending to the downside this may make another high and then come down hard to say but we know that there's going to be probably well the correction that's being that's being made is happening in a bullish way right now making lower lows on the RSI higher lows on price this is kind of a corrective wave right here but my my thinking is that the wave is actually right the corrective wave is right here and this is a fifth The other way to think of it is now not just to be what's the word um, against what I just said. This right here could be a three wave in the middle, and then we got this leg and this leg, and that all could be a correction. And the divergence we're getting is is simply the uh, because it's an expanded flat or a running flat. But you'll get divergence on a running and expanded flats, which would be followed by another wave to the upside. And that would be probably our fifth wave. So that's another count that we could have. If you'll look carefully at this wave right here, you notice it's the same shape it's a, it's a five wave shape sometimes in the five wave shape see how they had this running correction here this upward trajectory this is a like a choppy corrective wave but the last wave came way down and then it made another high so this was the fourth wave and that was the fifth So, is this going to come down like this one did? And then go up to make another high? And that be the fifth wave? Wouldn't that make sense? <laughs> sure it would. Get everybody thinking, up, oh, triple top, and come down, and then go up and break the high again one more time to stop everybody out. Yeah. Yep. And that's what I feel that this this is done. This is just we're at we're, we're, we could still be at the top of the wave. And this might just be a little uh, uh, just a stop out wave. Boom, take everybody out and now we go down. Okay, so you know, are, are you in a trade? Or are you not in a trade? If you're not in a trade, I don't know that it's really wise to trade this fifth wave because of all the shenanigans that you get. Look at all the shenanigans up here. There's just so much going on. It's where they take your money back. They get you excited on that move, and then they take the money back here. Anybody who missed it, they're trying desperately to be a part of it. right? That's the emotional state that 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 creates that big move says oh i gotta get in i gotta get in. i'm looking in for my entry you know and 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 then you know okay they give you an entry and then what do they give you that and that's it and then boom come take the high out and then boom you know and so this is most likely three waves and what they're doing is they're just going to come up and, and break the high again 
and then they're going to really come down. So I don't know that you need to worry about trading this last wave to the upside. I think, um, I think you should probably just let it happen. For me, as I think of it, I'd rather trade what's going to come after that, whether it's three waves or five waves for now. Because this is still, at the, if I zoom out, this is still at the top of a region that I expect the wave to be about finished. Let's look at the four-hour chart quickly. You can easily see how this could be just that fourth wave move we were looking for. And now this is the fifth. And this is the fifth of the fifth right here. I thought this one might be it as an ending diagonal. And maybe it was. <laughs> Until they said, oh, we got too, much pe too many people on to us. Let's go break the high. Remember, they often come where we think they get, where they're going to come. They just do it in a way we don't expect. Right? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so, still I'd be careful here that all we get is a break of the high and then a, and then a dump. Okay? Uh, a couple things I'm looking at on the... Uh, we still have this major divergence. Now, remember what I don't like about this major divergence is the fact that this never really made it up up here into the over so it would have made me a lot more comfortable with the divergence if this got up into the overbought region but nonetheless it's there remember the trend line I drew right there we had a break and a retest of it I redrew a new trend line right there we had a break and a retest of that one and with continuation now what they did is they, they've switched it up on us they're they're almost retesting it again or they're going to come up and make another high, which they can do that. If they want to do it. But when you get a break and a retest uh, on the RSI trend lines on the four hour, you got to pay attention to them. They're significant. They're significant. So what I'm going to now do is I'm going to draw this. Um, uh, I'm going to draw, I've got this trend line drawn, and then I'm going to draw this trend line as well on the four hour. We're threatening a break of it, which is fine. It can break it. But whenever it breaks a level, it kind of lets me know what, what, where the momentum is. So if it breaks through this, this trend line pattern here on the four hour, momentum's to the upside. But then I've got another point of resistance on the RSI right here that if even if it breaks this one, it may not break this one. And what that would do is price would probably probably get up here to break our high, get up here to break our high, but maintain the divergence that we have. And this divergence here would be the, the divergence between a third and a fifth wave of this last fifth wave of C. And so my, my count right now would be something like one, two, three, four, extended fifth in C. This is an extended fifth. I've talked about extended fifths in the past. It's where you have, that's the perfect way I drew it. It's where you have the fifth wave is almost a one to one. I mean, it can it, about a one to one extension of of waves one to three. And so, if this is one to three with a fourth wave in the middle, and then we get the fifth wave to the upside, but it's come up about to the one to one extension, it almost makes it look like it's a three wave move. Whoops, sorry. Boom, boom, boom. But it's really the fifth, it's, it's five waves of C of this move here. It's just got an extended fifth wave. A lot of confluence there. I like that. 
just for a good measure, can you measure that wave three, your proposed wave three only and project off of wave four? Yeah. Well, it, but this is an extended fifth, and so it's not going to give us the 618. No, I'm not looking for the 618. I'm looking for either a 1 to 1 or the 1618. And I would be curious of what the number of the 1618 would be. Um, okay. How, how do you want me to pull the fibs? I'm sorry. So you've got the top fibs. Good. Just take the bottom part that you measured and bring that to the bottom of two. Here? No, 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 no. That, that part was fine. The two top things were fine. Leave that one alone. That's good. Just take the bottom. Raise it up to your proposed wave two. Yeah. 51, 8, 51, 51. If you have an extended fifth of the extended fifth. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I'm not sure we'll get that, but yeah. <laughs> so, so like, like you're, the way you're going about this, I, I, I really like your, your count here with the potential fifth wave on, on the 15 minute. Like it's going to go up, break the high, and that'll be your wave five. But in Elliott Wave, the way I look at it is if that wave five is broken, then that is very potentially a wave one of the fifth wave right. in that sequence. I gotcha. I got gotcha. you. So, yeah, Marcus, you put them beyond what you think they can, and this might be one of those, just something to be aware of. So if you and are, the, and they're extending you know, extending time for the weekend, a weekend dump, you know, because they like to make make moves on the weekends, you know. I, yeah, they, I noticed that DXY is going down, S and P went down, and uh, Bitcoin went up. You know, what the heck? <laughs> yeah. Well, they can't go up in straight lines, and they got it. You know, if they tip their hat. Because, I mean, because, again, they, they did tip their hat, guys. Rem remember some of the key things we were watching, okay? We, we got a break. This, this trend line broke, okay? The uh, the four-hour, let's go to the eight-hour even, though. The eight-hour RSI broke, Okay, so th th that's that's a tip of the hat. They're saying, "Hey, this this trajectory is down." Okay, so they've got to make it difficult, and that's what they're doing. I think is they're just coming up and taking out liquidity up here, um, most likely. That that's my thinking right now. So I'm still biased to you know the the trajectory of the wave needs to. I'm still biased to this move here, whether it comes down impulsively or just correctively. I'm still biased to a, a larger corrective wave. Um, so let me measure this again here as a flat. Yeah, I mean, the, the 2618 is right up here. I don't know if the, this fifth is going to get that high, but there it is. You know, 49K. So I'm not sure if this fifth will get all the way up there. But, man, if it does, I wonder how much FOMO would ensue. Yeah, people won't believe it. Like, this isn't a sea leg. No way. If it passed the 1618. But what yeah. if it doesn't close above there, like on a four-hour or a daily? It just wicks above it and gets everybody fomo and then really rejects hard that would be so well man people will get wrecked maybe so uh yeah just trying to think like how they're going to grab the money right i don't want anybody to get wrecked yeah. but you know i'm just trying to think okay where are they how where are they going to grab the liquidity so i mean it's a possible count guys uh and you you got to you got to remember and keep in mind that we, we we have another possible count that this could be a one two that we're making the third wave that, that we might even have more up to go. This might be like a one, two here, and then another, you know, just just choppy, you know, they're just chopping it up, okay? So 
so we're going to keep that in mind. But I just the I'm paying attention to the RSI signals right now, and you know on all the time frames. And so what I'm personally and what you have to do, and you really have to watch all the time frames, not just because remember they can kind of. I mean, well, let me just remind you. Okay, this is the eight-hour chart here. Okay, they brought it up here, had a correction, but that correction reset the RSI. Okay, a and it broke structure. Oops, sorry. It broke structure right here. That lets you know we're getting another up move, right? But it created divergence here, and there's a lot of divergence here, right? But, okay, we got a corrective move, but what did that corrective move do? Reset the RSI. It broke that structure to the upside. Let you know we're getting another up wave. Okay. All right. Got more divergence right here. So we had divergence from back here. But we got more divergence here. Got another big corrective wave. Okay. That reset the RSI. And it broke the structure to the upside. And we got one more hit to the high. Created divergence. So you see how they can drag on the divergence? We're just now seeing the diverge the first the first set of divergence so what i'm what i'm personally interested in is with this divergence i'm going to get a down move yes but what do they do with the rsi in the process okay does it reset while price only comes down something like that okay i'm going to be looking for another hit to the high does that make sense, guys? So I don't know what's going to happen, and this wave is, I've got an idea for a count, but you have to be skeptical of your counts. You, you have to have a healthy healthy skepticism that you're wrong. Okay? And I say healthy because there's a way to be unhealthily skeptical, and it'll keep you out of every trade. I think it's going to go up, but man, it could be faking me out. It could go down. Oh, okay, I'm going to stay out of this one. Oh, but it's going down now. But they could be a fake out, and they could be going up now. I'm going to stay out. And, and just, <laughs> you know what I mean? You're constantly fearful of some kind of a, of a, of a, of a maker move, and you know they're going to make moves. You just have to learn how to – you have to decide, what is my criteria for entry? Do I see it? Where's my low-risk area to enter? And, okay, I'm going to give it a try and, and see if it works. I, I don't always know that my trades are going to pan out or not. <laughs> I'll just say I'm firing a bullet here because this is what I see, A, B, and C. I see, I see these things, and, and, and the probability tells me we're going, where, we're going down or going up. And I'll just trade directionally until the wave tells me something different. And, and so that's why sometimes I don't have a target of a take profit I've got ideas for take profit but I don't have targets necessarily sometimes because I'm really trading trading what the RSI is giving me and I, I'm actually allowing myself to be fluid with what the market is actually doing rather than being tied to some specific take profit point you know so that's why that's why I last night I hedged my my short I still believe I believed my count and I was trading my count but I'm like I could be wrong so and this is a really good area because I saw on the five minutes some really strong signals that maybe we go up but it could just go up for a corrective wave I don't know so let me let me hedge my short with a long here I didn't close my short and go long because I didn't believe the long I didn't have enough at the time I didn't have enough data to say, yeah, we're definitely we're going up, and here's the reason why I would think so. And you know, I, I believed my short more than I believed my long, so I hedged my short with a long, and then I let that let the wave develop, and I didn't close my long until I was convinced the long may be close to being finished. And so I closed the long, uh, and and now I'm I'm in I'm in profit some more dollars here as I kept my short open it's going down a little bit but based on what I've shared with you this morning I believe we're probably going to get another hit to the high so I'm looking to close my short once I see the 
once I see the evidence on the five minute chart, on the one minute chart of Ethereum that I'm looking to see. Let me just take a minute and pull the fibs here, if you don't mind. We've come down to the one to one extension. This is the five minute chart. You can see that the RSI is coming down and resetting. Comparatively to the last peak, it's creating, it's in the process of making hidden bearish divergence, hidden bullish divergence, I apologize. Where the RSI is resetting, created, creating that hidden bull. So most likely this is a fourth wave here, guys. Possibly, this could be a one, two, all right? three four five now can I share one alternate count for you guys would that be all right yeah, I kind of like this count <laughs> all right let me share one alternate count and that is this and I said it last night this could be just an extended ABC we did not break the high this could be a three-way pullback, extended, okay, and, and and it's got an extended fifth here in C. Now, uh, I've got some hesitancy ab about this, but you'll notice the divergence here between the third and the fifth wave there. Okay, this could be one, two, three, four, extended fifth wave, and that's A, B, C. And now we're heading down like we thought we were. <laughs> how how would that be for a trick? And that was actually what I had my... How, what's that? That actually looks really good. <laughs> uh, and so we did actually top out. All those signs we were seeing of the break of structure is fine. This is just a retest, but it's just an extended one. So that's my alternate count for you guys on both of these. So I don't know which which is going to play. But that's why I closed my long last night because I was thinking that's a real possibility. Because who would be expecting that? This looks so much like an impulse wave. But what if all we ever got was this extended wave and we never got the fifth wave? You're like, where's the fifth wave? You know, <laughs> you know, so. Uh, I am short right now and uh, we'll see. We'll see. I'm in profit and I'm still short from I did add to my short last night. So my my average price now is thirty two forty five. Thirty. 3245 All right, I hope I to be honest with you, I get I fin I get finished with things I've just shared with you guys. Um I feel like this is one you need if if you're learning to trade, you need to watch again and learn and understand the things that I've been saying because it's real critical to because I spent more time today on trading than I did on the count and how to think about this. Yeah. And it's, it's really where we need to be. Um, and I, so I, I, I self-assessing, I really am happy with the live I just gave you. Um, I, the only thing I can add to it is just do a little bit more finalization of, you know, of, of where the possible counts, which I've given you two right now. But, um, that's kind of what I'm thinking at this stage. That either we go up and break the high for the infamous one more hit to the high, uh, or or this was just a three-way pullback correcting this this wave here. Uh, this was some kind of a, a wave, and we just got a B, and now we're going to get a C to the downside. Or that's like a one two, and it's a really deep two, and we going down for three. All right. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. So you got to keep in mind here. I don't want to get 
remember we can right now we are hitting the corrective zone here three it looks like three waves and we're hitting the corrective zone so I'm gonna really be mindful here for a reversal to the upside we do have hidden the hidden bull in the five minute somewhat I mean we do um, it's just not fully developed all the way down here to the oversold that's what would make me happier the 15 minute um, it's not fully developed either the hidden bull this may have a little bit more downside to go but we're getting one of those candles you don't like to see you know those candles that, that say, hey, I'm going up here I go maybe <laughs> you know come on come and buy me hurry up come and yeah, buy right, me right. yeah yeah exactly yeah it's it's a come and buy me candle look here I'm at a fib I've got a I've got a green wick here look at that wick look at me I'm not doing anything right now I'm just showing you my my wick <laughs> Enticing you, yeah, and and, and 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 here's the way this plays out. Oh, I'm not buying that. I know you're coming down, and then it just starts inching up and up and up. <laughs> I'm like, crap! I missed it. <laughs> then that... your your invalidation would be the one six one eight. So that would be a trade long right there. Your stop loss is pretty tight. Not too bad. Yeah, but even then, you can't you can't depend on the one six one eight as the invalidation. I mean, because how many times do we go past it and then go? You know, <laughs> Just, yeah. you got, but you can even even on the ETH chart. If you look at where the wicks are, the wicks to the upside are acting as bounces, but the wicks to the downside are acting as foreshadowing. Like all of them. telling you where I'm going wick I'm going down <laughs> yeah so so it's it's going to come back up a little bit and then it's going to come down and engulf that yeah and, yeah and then make a downside and then probably get some kind of an upward movement but you know whether it breaks the high or not will probably determine where it's really going yep all right guys what can I add to what we've discussed that's going to make it better hold on a second maybe maybe draw a box <laughs> draw a box <laughs> well, you've almost got the box drawn up up top there it's a nice little distribution zone or you know reaccumulation re now this is the shakeout so if the price comes back up in that box it's likely to break the high and then come back in the box to reject You have to do a live sometime. You have to record a video on box trading, chemo, sometime. I am planning it. That's why I bought that microphone so I can start getting into uh, educational videos for everyone. Awesome. It's coming. It's coming. I'm going to be a YouTuber before you know it. <laughs> yeah, come on, man. <laughs> I'll just direct everybody to the Jim of All Chains channel. <laughs> What's that? I'll just direct everybody to your Discord, basically. No, you do whatever you want to do, man. That's called affiliate no, marketing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'll have to give you some kickback somehow. Or, uh, <laughs> yeah, multi level marketing. Um. <laughs> Promo code Kimo's Crap Counts. <laughs> <laughs> that, that needs to be the name of your YouTube channel. <laughs> For sure. That would be awesome. That would, well, let me let me just tell you, uh, the YouTube world sucks <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> yep, it's it's a hard thing. <laughs> uh, I, I thought it would be fun, and and there are times when it is. <laughs> But it's turned into like you'll notice that my you know my my video creation is much less than it used. To. I used to make a video every day, 
but now because I do two lives in the Discord every day, uh, and and you guys got a <laughs> yeah, but you guys got a sense for you know the 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 time dedication that takes and the you know to to be consistent and to do that uh, you know on a regular basis. It is it is a bit of a challenge. Um, my life kind of revolves around those two lives, and then and then whatever time I spend, you know, helping people at night in particular, um, you know, it it is uh, it's a good amount of work. And by the time you do all that, you're like, I don't feel like making a YouTube video, <laughs> but I made myself make one yesterday. So, <laughs> uh, and yesterday's video, guys, hey, look at this. Yesterday's video uh, got it's my number one video out of, the, out of let's see. Yeah, exciting. Uh, two thousand, almost two thousand views. Um, so I, I, I think I hit my my title was pretty good. I think bearish Ethereum signals and Bitcoin signals. So uh, I think my title had something to do with that. I, titles are hard. <laughs> I try to be as honest as I can with my titles, but you you have that's to. The, that's the problem. Huh. That's church. You just need to search MM Crypto and see what he's saying and do something similar to that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, but but yeah, that that's the thing. You have to learn to get, you know, enticing with your videos because I mean, cause that's a big part of the YouTube algorithm. It's huge um, because when you need you need exploding emojis <laughs> and and a look of shock on your face. <laughs> yeah. Don't do it, Jim. Please don't dip it. No, no. I, I see. I've I've never entered that world. I've not been super interested in, in you know, entering that kind of world of, of YouTube. <laughs> but, but nonetheless, YouTube is where you guys found me, right? So now that it's my livelihood, you know, trading and the Discord is my, I have to focus in on that a little bit. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, to maintain because I get I, I don't. Guys, I had like 30 people leave the Discord last last month. I, uh, you know, whether for whatever reason, I mean, and it w weren't a whole lot of negative feedback. Uh, some people were like, "Yeah, I don't have time to trade. Trading isn't what I wanted." You know, because I have exit, exit. So, uh, everybody wanted to come in as price was going up. And like, oh sweet, this is easy. And then as soon as you have to be a trader, it's like, well, I don't like that. Well, you, you know, somebody, I mean, the, the way I think about it is some of you come to my channel and you're like, you know, I talk about, hey, we traded this and, you know, if I share a trade that we had and it was a success and that if you're like, yeah, I want to I want to learn to do that. And then you come to the Discord, you might have preconceived notions that it's simple or it's easy. Um, and then you learn, well, I really got to work at this. I got to I got to watch videos. I got to learn how to pull fibs. I got to learn how to read the RSI. And this actually takes time. It, it takes more than a month. It takes more than a month. It, it takes more than probably three to six months. Now, if you're doing diligent study for three to six months, you're going to get pretty proficient. Uh, I watched I watched Chris Frankie go from knowing hardly anything to to just he's he's rock solid in his Elliott wave analysis and I th I think he's I don't know where he is in his psychology but you know his Elliott is really really good and and I've watched him grow it took him about three to six months um you know what I mean so that's just an example of you know people but, come here and think oh man you gotta work at it oh my <laughs> gosh come on. yeah I, I I I think even though I say this isn't a signal group all the time I think people are still looking for a signal group, <laughs> you know, that's, that's oh, yeah. what it is. People are looking for signals. Yeah. And, and, and I, I give them, but they're not simple. You have to know how to trade to trade my say, like, you know, like the setup that I shared last night, you had to, you had to know not to enter, <laughs> you know, because we didn't get our final, our final signal to enter. So you have to, you still have to understand things. You can't just say, I, well, that's the risk management side of it. I didn't enter that one, but, I think anybody who entered that trade would have been fine to enter the trade. Like the the signal itself was great, it, but you just have to be careful because it's like anything else; it can turn right around on you, and it did. So I didn't grab that one, but if anybody did, like it, it wouldn't be an embarrassing thing. It was a not great at signal. all. Yeah, there there were there were things in the chart that said hey, but for me, it didn't give me my final divergence I wanted to see in wave C between the third and the fifth wave, and because of that, it was a no enter. It was a it was a and plus I had a gut feeling the whole time 
it's a trap. <laughs> you know, it was it, the way, because I've just lived through that time and time again. Um, so anyway, but yeah, but uh, and it, that, that being said, guys, so I, I constantly have people, you know, coming and going uh, in, in the discord for whatever reason. And it's okay. It's fine. I, I, I used to get my feelings hurt about it. <laughs> I was like, why'd you leave? <laughs> you know, it's just part of life. No, nah, no, nah, you can't, you can't take it. Oh, oh no, 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 no. It used to be kind of like that way. I just, I, now anymore, I'm like, be, best wishes to you. I hope you, hope you do well. No problem. And you know, it's just not, it might be that Elliot's, you know, that's too hard. I need to find something easier or, you know, whatever. And I get that. Totally get that. So, cause it is more challenging, but to me, Oh man, once you get it, it's much, it's a better. And once you get, once you get three pieces of the puzzle, once you understand Elliot really well, and once you learn how to read the RSI really well, and once you get a hold of your risk management, you're going to be a successful, profitable trader, and that's the key. You got to put those three pieces in in, in place. You got to learn to read the RSI. You got to become very good at reading the RSI, and then very good uh, understanding how the RSI relates to Elliott counts, and then you put those two together, and then without greed, <laughs> you know, with with good risk management, you're you're going to win a lot of trades. That, to be honest with you guys, that's been my biggest holdup as becoming become a, becoming a profitable trader over time is is having a uh i i overconfidence in my abilities uh to to know what the market's going to do because i'm pretty good at it but i sometimes i get an overconfidence that i trade i trade a false confidence that i have and i end up getting myself in trouble and i'll lose a big trade whereas i was winning a bunch market of trade time yeah yeah exactly uh and, and then the other thing is i just risk too much trying to make make pro too much profit at once and so once uh, i've i've really over the you know since i've been full-time been, been working on that piece of it that's it's and i'm i'm, I'm finally i don't know I'm, I'm finally where i need to be right now as far as you know my risk management mindset uh, and I'm I'm just having successful trade after after a successful trade. They're small right now, uh, but but I've had to I've had to be trading small accounts because I've been dealing with my own my own greed and psychology. Um, I know what to do. It's just getting a hold of it. Isn't that funny? You know you know what to tell someone else, and you know what to do. But when it comes down to it, you you turn into a gambler. <laughs> you know what I mean? You turn into this this risk monster. Uh, and but what's that the monster for sure yeah it happened yeah so one but once you get those pieces of the puzzle together uh the risk management piece big deal that's a big deal once you get a hold of you shouldn't be trading more than 10 percent of your account which some might say that's high for me that's I, i'm okay with 10 percent of my account or less uh you know in other words, I'm not trading, I'm not leveraging more than 10% of what I have. Okay. Um, when, once you do that, you know, you'll win trade after trade. Trade after trade. Because even if you, because you know the market oscillates up and down, and even if you fire a bullet and, and it's a very small bullet, it's it's like a third of a tenth of, of your, of your uh, it's like a third or a fourth of a 10% position then you're like, oh, I can hold this until it comes back. And that's a worst case scenario. You just become a little investor <laughs> knowing it's going to come back. Uh, and then you just look for other trades in the meantime with the other you know, the other bullets. Trade with the trend. Oh, I got this bullet. It's a little wayward if you don't cut it. But, you know, but that's the thing. You can cut it. You can hold it. You don't care because it's small enough. The risk is so small. And that's the important thing. And, and that's what you have to learn. Um, so learn RSI, learn Elliott, um, develop, you know, develop your rules for entry and refine those, um, and then manage, manage your risk and you're going to make, you're going to make a bunch of money over time. It, you may not make it as fast as you might make it if you were risking more and winning, but the thing is when you risk more, you don't win as much. And that's, that's the problem. The market knows, oh, we got a risky player here. Look at this. They they know where your liquidation points are. <laughs> Trust me, 
their algorithms probably read you know that information that's readily available for you by the exchange it says hey here's your liquidation at this place don't think that that information is not available to the market makers uh, algorithms that they can go read the read the exchange books anytime they want that that's my guess I don't I don't have any knowledge to that to that end like well, yeah they have, they have open interests so they know how many traders are in the market and based upon how many traders are in the market they know how many roughly how much liquidations they can get with a certain percentage move that's just uh, probably just probability yeah on your side of that yeah So anyway, you've got the, the only way to win this game is to, to manage your risk. Small. That's the only way to win. Consistently. Small, small, small. And as your as your account grows, you're going to be making bigger trades. Your problem is you want to make a big trade on a small account. Now you make big trades on big accounts. If your account's not the right size then you're not going to make a big trade and when your account gets a big enough to where you can just trade spot that's that's ultimately the best we got Tim in here what Tim are you, are you around still yeah what did you make seventeen thousand dollars this month trading spot he's here but I don't know if he's talking but he, he shared that last night in the group just trading spot I think he started with 5000 or 2000 I can't remember. But anyway, he started with a couple of Ethereum, and then he just kept buying and selling it, you know, on, on spot. Nice. So, uh, yeah, so you can, you can make money just trading spot. So, you can do it, guys. You can do it. I hope this live... Live has been good for you. I, let me know if there's anything I can do for you. If you're losing trades and you don't know why, let me know. I will help you diagnose it and I will give you some rules. And I've helped a couple of people that have actually reached out and said, hey, I, I, I'm, I, I just want to keep offering that to you. Don't lose trades. There's no sense in it. You don't need to. I can show you why you're losing trades and help you get out of it. If, if you want to, we do have the third tier. Uh, Matt, you went through that for a month or two. Was that worth it for you? To... I, I would say it would be worth it to me even now if I didn't have my money tied up in moving. <laughs> yeah, no. I'm just saying that, that did you find the mentorship that we had for the couple months that we did it? Did you did you grow? Did you did you uh, learn? Yeah. And, and, and... yeah definitely. Because, I mean, the, the money that I spent just getting my stuff together was not even close to how much I had been losing before that. So, yeah. <laughs> I would say so. So, we do have the mentorship tier. Uh, and and, I, I'll, and it's not designed for you to be part of it, like, month to month for a bunch of months. Uh, a month or two in that tier will probably get you where you want to be as a trader faster. Um, so, anyway... I'm, I'm not selling it. I'm just letting you know it's available to you if you want some real one-on-one. -on -one. And Matt and I met whenever he needed it. And whenever, uh, and sometimes he wasn't calling me out. I was like, hey, man, we need to meet because of time or whatever. But, you know, and, and we talked about things, and and he grew. And I, I'm, I'm watching you in the group, Matt, and I'm just so so proud of you, man. You just, I, I'm seeing a, I'm seeing a, at least a, an independent trader making his own decisions and making good ones. So... Um, mostly good ones yeah yeah i mean at least what you're sharing is, is excellent but we all have our, we all have our we all have our own private struggles but you know what to do you know what to do now, yeah. now you have to get the psychology in place and that's that's it's part of the heart i usually part. know i screwed up within about 10 minutes after i do it now at least <laughs> yeah yeah so just got to get your psychology in place so so anyway guys uh but i'll help you a little bit you know diagnose it for free guys i mean for whatever tier you're in just reach out i'll, I'll just have a conversation with you and say hey all right this is your problem <laughs> I'll, t I'll diagnose you and then i'll tell you what you need to do. i'll give you i'll give you a formula uh you know and if you need more than that then then you can you know whatever so 
Um, anyway, I'm not trying to sell that. It's just I just there's some some of you that might benefit from that, and um, but it's much more of a deep relationship and uh, more time consuming for sure. Y'all yeah, have a great day. I'll get this uploaded. Um, so, in summary, just we're looking for a possible another hit to the high, maybe as a potential count, um, with a reversal wave to the downside fo to follow, or it could be coming down now. We we might already have th that that move last night was actually just an extended ABC, <laughs> and if that's the case, we could just be coming down from here. So I've got my fibs pulled, and I'll be watching watching this price action right here. So that's kind of the summary of the wave structure and whatnot. This is a good one. Lots lots in this one for trading and psychology and just uh, anyway. Make sure uh, make sure if you didn't catch the whole thing, you might go back and rewatch it. Uh, and I'll um, I'll put a must watch warning on this one. Uh, I hope y'all feel the same way. <laughs> You're like Jim. It wasn't that great. <laughs> <laughs> no, definitely. No, I, yeah, yeah, absolutely. I, I, I think there's a lot of nuggets in here that if you can get a hold of them, uh, you'll really, it'll really help you in your trading for sure. So anyway, all right, guys, have a great day. We'll talk to y'all later. Okay.